the third video in this playlist is all about the rules for writing electron configurations and then we'll do <clears throat> excuse me like i said then we'll do lots of examples in videos coming up on how to write electron configurations okay so again Electron configurations are a fancy way to write how the electrons are arranged in the atoms in the orbitals. So the previous video, um, we went over that there are S, P, D, and F orbitals. All right, and the S, P, D, and F orbitals all have different shapes. They are spherical, they are dumbbell, they are double dumbbell and they are mega complex whatever that looks like all right and what i want you to think of is that as soon as one fills up another layer comes in and that layer is in a very specific order and we're going to go over that in this video all right so when we start thinking about layers think of onions think of ogres like our shrek and our gobstoppers right so if you've ever had an everlasting gobstopper and you break it apart it's not a flat um, rings around it's going to have like that nucleus in the center right here so this would be your nucleus and then it has just these layers of s orbitals these spherical three-dimensional things and our electrons can be anywhere inside of them all right so in order to go over electron configurations there are three rules for writing them and this is where it gets a little tricky because i'm going to go over these three rules and i'm going to refer back to them all the time but it's not going to make any sense until we actually start doing our electron configurations so please bear with me all right so the first rule that we're going to go over is the off ball principle and i believe it's german for filling all right so how do we fill in our electrons electrons are going to enter orbitals with the lowest energy level first all right, so this is an off ball diagram, off bow, off ball diagram, and it's going to show the lowest energy down here and the highest energy up here. And because the S has this spherical shape and this P has this dumbbell shape and the D has the double dumbbell and the F has the complexity. All right, it's just going to oversimplify the whole thing and just make a line for each orbital. All right, so what you'll see here is for the S orbital, there is one type of sphere, so it has one line. All right, and we're going to put electrons in there. And you'll see that we have our layers of S. We have our first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh layer as they go up. In between that, we are going to put our layers of p and remember there are three types of p there's the x the y and the z orbital so you're going to see three equal energy levels right here and then when that's full it goes up to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and then we have our d orbitals okay and remember there are five types of d orbitals one two three four five so you'll see that there are five lines here and they are kind of in between here. And then lastly, we had seven types of our F orbitals. So you'll see that there are seven orbitals listed like so. And then there would be a, whoops, a 5F up here, etc., etc. So we're gonna use this line to represent these complicated shapes just to try to simplify the whole thing. Okay, rule number two. Rule number two is the Pauli exclusion principle. And it says that even though there are two electrons that can fit in the same atom, no two electrons can fit in the exact same place. 
So we're going to arbitrarily, randomly, just assign them different spins. All right, so if our line is our orbital, to represent our orbitals, we're going to make an upward arrow for one of the electrons and a downward arrow for the other electrons. So these are going to be our electrons. And they show that they are two different things. What we'll eventually do is because it's going to um, save us a little bit of time and energy is we usually end up using half arrows just because it takes less time to make a half arrow than it does to make a full arrow. So you'll see that we end up using these guys usually. But once it's full, we're going to move on to the next orbital. Rule number three is Hun's rule. And I call this the bedroom rule or the bus rule, okay, depending on what you're more uh, privy to. Bedroom rule is usually for like suburban people, bus rule is usually for um, urban people. So it says when electrons occupy orbitals of equal energy, so we're talking about the p orbital, the d orbital, and in the f orbitals. One electron enters each orbital until all the orbitals contain one electron with the same spin. So one electron goes here, then it spreads out into this one, and then it spreads out into this one. After they are all half filled with one electron each, then you're going to see it double up in the first one. Okay, so why is this called the bedroom rule or the bus rule? Okay, so in the suburbs, usually homes are bigger. And if you have a three bedroom home, okay, the parents have one child, it goes into the first room. The parents have a second child, it goes into the second room and spreads out. The third child goes into the third room. And then the fourth child, that's when they're going to actually double up. So why is it called the seat rule or the bus rule? Okay, so if you get onto a bus and there are three available open seats, the first person that gets on the bus goes in the first seat, the next available person goes in the next seat, the next available the next person that comes on goes in the next available seat, and it's not until everybody has one seat where the fourth person that goes on would double up. Okay, so you have to make sure that you go in the same direction and then you go and double up in the opposite direction. Okay, so this would be for the p orbitals. A d orbital, which has five, it would take one, two, three, four, five half filled orbitals, and then you would double up with six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so to help with all of that, we are going to write the electron configurations of the first 20, ooh, not 12, the first 21st elements. All right, and we're going to do that with um, the next video, but I want to make sure that you are prepared for it because you're going to use this right here, which is an off-ball diagram that I came up with in order to show that. And the off-ball diagram has all three rules written right here. All right, here is your nucleus, your baseline, where the energy is going to be the lowest. And then this is where the energy is going to be the highest. And this is exactly what the off-ball diagram would look like. The lowest energy is going to be in the 1s orbital. Then the next lowest energy is in the 2s. Then the next lowest energy is not the 3s. There's something lower than that, 2p. I just separate out the p's, the d's, and the f's so that you can see them. Yes, we can put them all in the same um, you know, spot, but it's not going to be as user-friendly. So once you fill up the 2p, then you go to the 3s. Then once you fill up the 3s, then you go to the 3p. Then you go to the 4s, then you come out to the 3d, then the 4p, then the 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, 7p. And with using these three different rules, we can properly show what 
any one of these electron configurations are going to look like, how these electrons are arranged. All right, so check out the next video.